Hi guys, let's look at uh, series 2 of 2023 computer studies paper 1 predictor. So we have the questions and answers. State two ways in which your school librarian can use a computer. We have our two marks. Then question number two, we have state three types of OS or operating system when classified according to a human computer interface. Guys, we just dash to the marking scheme. So we have state two ways in which your school librarian can use a computer. So uh, you can use it to access records of books and other library materials are much faster to keep updated records of books and materials in the library to search titles of books for someone to borrow to carry out search in cases where there is connectivity then number two we have state three types of os or operating system when classified according to a human computer interface so guys we usually have command line uh, operating system we have menu driven also we have graphical user interface remember guys this is form one work and if you just discover the topic in which questions comes from you definitely must write something that is relevant then we have question number three state the purpose of each of the following database design remember database is something that um, many students don't like so we have input mask we have default value we have required remember we have others like caption format yes no etc so input mask automatically formats the field entry into a field into that is into a specified format like for example guys if i want telephone number where i require 10 digits like uh, plus 256 707 blah 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 you must set that one in the input mask it is a field property then we have the default value it is a value that appears automatically in the field if if nothing is entered by the user or change it rather it is a value that is entered automatically for new records like if I set my year to 2023 as my default value, that means that the next record that will be blank will be fed with 2023. Then we have, we have required. Just like the word goes, required means it is either required or not required. That is yes, no. So it determines if an entry must be made in the field before you proceed to the next field. Simple. Then we have question number four. Explain why an impact printer is suitable for printing of multiple copies. Remember, an uh, impact printer can accept carbon papers. Guys, if you haven't uh, you, um, interacted with a carbon paper, you can ask your computer teacher to provide a carbon paper. Definitely, or what the carbon paper does, it allows you to uh, write using a biro pen, using your hand, using any brand object. Whenever you write on it, it automatically deprecates. So these printers um, allow you to use carbon papers to make copies rather than using the, pen, the toner or using the cartridge or wasting a lot of ink. So since impact printers produce characters through physical contact, that is striking mechanism between the paper and the printing mechanism. It is possible to press a sheet of carbon paper or print or inked ribbon is pressed between two sheets of paper during printing. The pressure applied by the print head element causes the characters to be printed on all the papers. That is the top paper being the original copy, where the other papers carbon copy. So guys. I have explained that one in the simplest manner possible. Then we have question number five. With reference to word processing, that is form two, topic number one. Describe the term subscript, 
ident editing. So when you talk about uh, subscript, it is raising a character above the baseline. Like when you write x squared, the two above x is, um, sorry, the, when you write something like rog, uh, that is rog, uh, rog 100 base 10, the 10 down there is the subscript. And when you write H2O, that is water in chemistry, the two below there is the subscript. When we talk about x cubed, x squared, the three up there above x or the two up there above x is superscript. Then we have ident. Ident means making a paragraph. Kutengeneza aya. So what happens uh, is that um, when you ident, you are pushing text away from the left margin. Uh, uh, that is it. Then we have two types of ident. We usually have uh, increased ident and decreased ident. Then we have editing. Editing means uh, making changes. That is making changes. So when somebody talks about editing, he or she is talking of uh, making changes. That is the simplest uh, English ever, or that is in reference to computer studies. Guys, we proceed on. What precaution would you take in the computer room in case the user complains of the following? Backache, we have eye strain. We also have, you can add another one, just like wrist, uh, wrist pain. So guys, when we talk about um, uh, backache, we, we refer it as rumbago. Then uh, that is a medical term, rumbago. That means... Uh, probably somebody did not provide you with the standard furniture or the height of the table is somehow compromising. So guys, on the other hand, we have eye strain. Eye strain can be caused uh, because of uh, not adjusting the computer screen. Uh, you can also uh, talk of anti -grayer. There are no anti -grayer screens. Then we can also talk of uh, not taking frequent breaks. Some guys remain in computer lab forever. They don't want to take breaks because they are having interesting stuff. Also, proper writing. Computer lab should be printed, uh, should be printed using dark colors. That is to promote the uh, to promote the the health of the eyes. So then we have question number seven. Uh, we have ABC company has offices in Nairobi and Nyeri connected in a network. The management has evidence that their system is being illegally accessed. State three ways in which the company can overcome the problem. So guys, here we are talking about networking or data security in Form 2, where we talked about an authorized access and computer crimes. So here... Uh, we are talking about the ways in which you can avoid an authorized access and um, uh, and also uh, pro, uh, that is keep away hackers and other guys. So we have the answers like you can do something like data encryption that is mixing data in a way that only the sender and the recipient receives. You can also employ ethical hackers who can try to hack your system so that they identify the reports or the weaknesses. That one is called audit trial. Then you can also monitor, like in a bank situation whereby there is lost money, the manager can see who logged in in that time when money was lost. So log files are the, the account, that is the account summaries, who logged in this time and what were, were the activities that they were doing at that time. So then we have, uh, you can activate firewalls. Firewalls is a hardware or software that detects suspicious uh, uh, in infiltrations, not really viruses. You see, we also have some malicious codes, like um, when somebody is trying to hack. Uh, then we have, uh, we have, 
the next question. State the reasons why a company may prefer using in-house developed software over standard software. Guys, this question comes from topic number two in form one, computer systems. And um, this, um, so this is more, uh, one of the most challenging uh, topics in form one where you teach students or students are like, they don't understand what you're talking about. So we have standard software and uh, in-house software. When you talk about standard software, this is about software or uh, we, we, you can just get it over the shelf. Whereas an in-house software, this is a software whereby you call somebody to code for you, to write for you a software according to your needs. So the question asks, state the reasons why people, uh, a company or people may prefer a created software in their office or in their room rather than buying. So uh, the first answer is that standard software may not meet the unique needs of the company. Standard software may contain features not required by the company. Standard software may rack features required by the company. Standard software may be incompatible with the company system. So, like for example, guys, if I can give you an example, if you just go for Microsoft Access and then you call a software engineer to create for you a database, you can agree with me that Microsoft Access will have so many features that you don't require or so other features that you use or you overuse but the person you call will give you exact features that you require then guys we have question number nine state two advantage of output displayed on the screen of a printed output on paper so here we are talking about soft uh, soft copy vis-a-vis -vis or versus uh, hard copy this is form one Topic number two. So guys, uh, the answers are that can be kept in a file for record purposes. Printed document does not require any other device to read. Can be read later even when the printer is not available. Printed document can be signed for authenticity purposes. Also, they can be stamped or given a seal. Question number 10. State two ways in which users in an organization can be a security threat to data in the information system. So guys, uh, you can imagine that uh, in an organization, people don't trust each other. So through accidental access to a file they are not supposed to access, you may get a certificate of another employee who scored an E in KCSC. So that one will be an accidental access by using confidential data for their own personal gain. You may use your manager's signature to get a own. That is uh, confidential data for your own gain through in, uh, intentional access to unauthorized data. For example, you have messed up with your boss and then you want to crucify him or her. So you can access some uh, data that he used in corruption to crucify him. That is through intentional access to unauthorized data. So we have question number 11, guys. We have that three computer, you state three computer hardware specification features to consider as a measure of enhancing performance. So the answers are high processor speed, high primary memory capacity or the RAM or RAM. We have high stroke enough secondary memory capacity. We have high resolution output devices. We have data bus, uh, that is data bus bandwidth. Bandwidth is the amount of data that can be transmitted through a cable or a transmission media. Then we have B. What is power surge? Let's just look at the, how the examiner set that question. That is question number 11. So we are asked, highlight three computer hardware specification. No, 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 B. Power surge and burnout can damage sensitive computer ports. How can this be avoided? This is a very general and simple question guys so the answers are that connecting a computer through a power surge protector or ups that is straight and forward question number 12 give two ways in which farmers can benefit from use of 
ICT or information and communication technology. So number one is keeping farm records electronically. That is marketing their farm produce through the internet or through social media. Also preparing payroll for their workers using spreadsheet. Guys, you can see that these are powerful answers. Question number 13, list three duties of a system analyst. This is a very questionable, uh, this is a very testable question. Forgive me for the slip of the tongue. So guys, we have duties of a system analyst. This is in form four and also in form three topic called system development and also careers in uh, ICT that is in form four. So the system analyst gather record and analyze facts of the system designs new system and recommend changes for the existing one prepare instruction manuals coordinate training for the users of the new system works with the programmers hand in hand to construct and test the system also coordinates the implementation of the new system this is a very important guy in the information systems then we have question number 14. Explain three reasons why an organization may need to change to a new computerized system. So number one, if there exists a problem in the current system, availability of new opportunities or a directive from the management. Then we have part B. You are supposed to identify the following uh, symbols. Number one is data input device. Number two is disk master. These are found in as a system flowchart in system development that is in form three. Then differentiate between a primary key and a foreign key as used in database. Guys, people don't really understand the difference between a primary key and an index key. So like for example, if you have a table with a doctor ID, that is from the doctor's table, then you have doctors, the same doctor's ID in patient's table. In the doctor's table, the doctor ID is the primary key, but since it has been repeated in the patient's table, it becomes now the primary key. So a primary key is an index that uniquely identifies each record in a table, where a foreign key is a key from another table that refers to a specific key that is the primary key in the table being used. Guys, you can watch videos from my uh, YouTube channel explaining practically the difference between a primary key and a foreign key. Guys, let's head to section B. Remember section B, you must answer question 16 and any other three. So question 16A, state three advantages of high-level programming languages. So high-level uh, languages are portable. High-level languages are user-friendly. Remember, the examiner can ask you the meaning of user-friendly. This means the ease to work with the system. It is easy to run and easy to uh, use. High-level languages are more flexible and enhance creativity of the programmer. Debugging is easy. Then there are, there are several stages uh, taken during program development. State the stage in which uh, the, the likely input, that is the problem definition, requirements, specification would be written, that is analysis. Guys, remember to go through Form 3 book. If you want to score an A, Book 3 must be in your bloodstream. Then we have Part C. A school pays cash employees based on number of hours worked as for us. Less than 10 hours, you are paid Kenya shillings 100 per hour. Up to 15 hours, you are paid 150 per hour. More than 15 hours, you are paid 200. Uh, uh, that is Kenya shillings. So write a pseudocode to input name, late hours worked. The pseudocode should output the name, hours worked, and wages paid. So guys, this is how you write about it. Remember to increment. This is a marking scheme. You are supposed to increment. So this is a start. You get a half mark. We have input name, rate, hours. You get another half mark. Then you you include the the control structure. If if hours worked is less or equal to ten, wages equals to hours worked times hundred. Else, if hours worked is fifteen, then wages equals to hours times one fifty. Else, 
if hours worked is greater than 15, then wages is hours worked times 200, then and if, and if, and if, output the name hours worked. Remember guys, if you use two ifs, you must cross it with two and if. If you use ten ifs, you must uh, cross it with ten and if. That is the key. Then you are supposed to draw the flowchart. The flowchart is simple like uh, drinking water. So if you are asked to draw a flowchart, first of all, even if the examiner doesn't ask you to, just draw the pseudocode, it makes your work easier. So this is our flowchart. You name, rate, hours, then you have the decision uh, like you uh, can see from that one. You can pause the video and study the flowchart. Then you have question number 17. Distinguish between a range and a label as used in spreadsheet. Remember guys, very many students skip spreadsheet questions. Spreadsheet is widely feared. I don't know why, because for me, I'll just go and answer the spreadsheet question, which is simple and straight to the answer. So, a label is a text or alphanumeric character. Then we have the, the other part. The, part. the other part is a range. A range is a specified, it is a specified address or the specified group of cells. Then, explain the purpose of each of the following features in a worksheet, that is in data management. Guys, remember this is book two. Second topic, spreadsheets. So you have sorting, filtering, and subtotaling. This is just like drinking water. Sorting is uh, arranging data in either ascending or descending order. Filtering is extracting data that meet a certain criteria. Like, for example, give me guys who scored a minus in your class. You are, you are filtering. You are just uh, giving data that meet a certain criteria, A minus. Subtotaling is summarizing data that uh, have the same, um, that is, that have a same character or have a same similarity. Like, for example, if I want to get the fees balances of to north, to east, to west, guys in to east are the same. So I subtotal to east, I subtotal to north, I subtotal to west, then I get the grand total of the whole form two stream. So subtotaling is just giving summaries of sums of a certain criterion. Then we have convert the decimal number as you can see on your screen to binary so guys you just continue you have two parts the first part is called the integral part or the integer part then the second part that is the seven is the integral part then from dot to 5625 is called the fractional part the fractional part you continuously multiply by two whereas the integral part you divide by two your teacher can guide you on that then we, are, we also have using to complement, perform this arithmetic. Remember guys, when you're dealing with two's complement or one's complement, you deal with the negative part. So you don't touch the positive part. Rather than converting it to binary or giving it to eight bits, you don't really work on it. So the next point is that explain the following functions of the operating system. This is... Uh, this is form two. This is form two. Uh, this is form two. Uh, that that's sorry. This is form one. Rust topic, but some teachers teach it in uh, in uh, in form two as the first topic. So guys, you're supposed to give memory management, security, input output, uh, such. Uh, so. Mm, then the answers are as follows. How can you explain memory management? Operating system divides the memory into pages or slices. The operating system knows exactly on which type of process or data is currently held in the memory. Remember in computer studies, don't give stories like in history. Just give points straight to the answer and then you score your A. Security operating system implements security policies to ensure that unauthorized users cannot access to a computer network resource. I.O. or input output management, the OS uses device drivers to manage and communicate with the I.O. or the input output devices. Then we have part B, 
to identify three hardware considerations to be made before installing an operating system. This is form one second topic. The last part, that is the hardware and software considerations. So we have the memory size, the processor speed, availability drives or ports. We can have more answers. State two advantages in which of the following system changeover strategies. This is form three last topic system development we have changeover this is how you change from the old system to the new system so we have parallel changeover direct changeover first changeover remember cbc and 844 we are using the first changeover we are implementing it in stages direct changeover is cheap this is whereby the the old system is discarded or lost and then the new system is being replaced Parallel changeover is whereby the old system and the new system are run parallel or together until the workers feel comfortable. So you can visit that one as your assignment and get the advantages and the disadvantages in book three. Then guys, we have our second last question, question 19. What is meant by each of the foreign terms in the internet? Remember, the, the, the emerging issues are the internet. We have social media. We have chat GTP, we have Google, search. So guys, we also have e-commerce. So internet must be tested. What is meant by the foreign terms? We have surf, uploading, inbox, you can talk of draft, outbox, send items, search. So to surf is to browse or to access the internet. To upload is to share a file from your system to the internet. Then we have the cousin download. Download is uh, getting a file from the internet to your machine. Then we have inbox. Inbox is the inbox is the folder that uh, contains the files that you. Receive. So the next question is state the function of the following commands on uh, web browsers softwares. So you have refresh button. We have history buttons. Guys, this is knowledge. Remember, information is power. Refresh button is used to reload a web page after failure in the current attempt. Like, for example, if you want to access Herb or you want to access something like university where, or college where, or Tibet where you have been admitted, then the page is not bringing the data. You just press refresh. Then history is very important in case you had visited a very nice site doing research in previous times and you want to access it again. You can just hit the history button and scroll to the dates or time that you had accessed. Also, when you want to see what your children or your siblings had accessed during the day, you can just go to the history and access what they had accessed. Then we have explained three problems associated with the use of email for communication. Number one is insecurity. It can be hacked. Spread of viruses. Somebody may send you a file from infected, um, uh, that is from infected machines. Though in some cases, Microsoft or Yahoo or Google may identify the virus and remove or cancel or block the email. Use of email to lessen social contact with people. Lack of room to clarify message that might be misinterpreted. Computer and the internet are necessary to send an email which may not be available to all. That is very crucial. Then list four types of publication. Oh, this one should be examples, not real types, but it's okay. Uh, should be list for examples of publication designs by DTP because we have only two types of DTP so we can uh, we can just change that one to examples that one is the real thing types of DTPs are two we have layout based and graphical based just like we looked in our rust paper predictor so here we have cards posters brochure we have uh, newspapers, calendar. You can also add textbook, graduation cards, wedding cards, blah, 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 blah. There are many. 
then state the meaning of the foreign terms as used in DTP. Remember, the examiner can draw for you the that is the DTP uh, toolbox, then asks you to identify rest. Just see, because this one looks crucial. Let's look at that one. That one looks crucial. It's a crucial question and very examinable. Remember, DTP is part of the uh, syllabus. So here, the examiner did not ask a uh, draw for you and ask you to identify the toolbox. But I would advise you to go to question, oh, sorry, not really question, but topic number four or whichever, the way it has been designed. Make sure you go to DTP. You can identify the toolbox of Adobe PageMaker and a toolbox for Microsoft Publisher. You can be in a position to identify the crop tool, the toolbox, the auto shapes, etc. So state the meaning of the following embedded object, out of row, crop, layering. So that is question number 19 as we go to the end of our paper. So guys, embedded object is an object not created in the program in use, but in another program and it's placed in, in, into the program. For example, if I import my passport that is in uh, Microsoft uh, image viewer or paint to Adobe page maker or to publisher, then that is becomes an embedded object. Also, if I create, uh, that is, we are talking about, we, we narrow down to desktop publishing. So if I import an, uh, an image that was not, not created in DTP, then it becomes an embedded object. Then we have out of room. It is a feature that make text to automatically carry over into the text column of the page or text box. If you look at Microsoft Publisher, if I have two pages and uh, I just create a column, then paste the text there, Microsoft Publisher down there on the end of the text box, it creates an A and dash, 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 showing you that there is more text that is uh, being to, uh, that is there and need to be created more space to occupy. Crop. This is to hide unwanted parts in an object. Like for example, if you take somebody's full photo and you, you want a passport out of it, so you hide the unwanted parts and display the part that you want. Then you have master page. When I want to place something that should be displayed in all other pages. Like for example, if I have 64 pages and then I want the school logo to appear in the 64 pages, you place the logo in the master page. So what's the master page? Master page is used to design a common layout to be applied in all other pages. Simple and clear. Then you have layering. Layering puts objects or textbook on top of each other. You see, it's layering. You are creating layers. So it's just like placing one object over the other. Rastre, we have questions 20. It comes from form four. That is topic number one, networking and data communication. Differentiate between simplex and duplex transmission mode. So when you talk about simplex, it's communication in one direction, while duplex transmission is communication in both directions. Like for example, when policemen are talking to each other, they must say over so that the other guy can talk. But when you talk about duplex, uh, somebody talks, then the other one talks. So it is uh, both direction transmission. We also have four duplex, like in our mobile phones, where you can carry the share each other and everybody is hearing. So uh, make, make uh, an effort of uh, research on duplex, four duplex, and simplex. Then explain three advantages of creating a computer network. So data and information held on a network is prone to illegal access. That is very true. Initial cost of buying network hardware and software is very expensive or very high of a reliance of network in short this the examiner is asking on the demerits that is when you use uh, network so much 
what are the repercussions you can also experience large networks like internet experiencing large traffics large networks like internet have resulted in moral and cultural decay so you can have such as the disadvantages just like i have been stated in our book four so identify the network below the answer is star topology so also study about star topology hierarchy ring topology bus topology star like we have have here etc also study about logical topology where we have token ring and ethernet those ones can also be tested since they are in our syllabus state three disadvantages associated with the above type of topology so if the central hub fails the entire network will be down require more cables to install hence more expensive installation is time consuming then we have our last question list three application areas of artificial intelligence remember guys I have done this is a second series of KCSE 2023 predictor and we can still predict it in 2024 and going on we are talking about artificial intelligence throughout so there is no way the examiner will not set a question on artificial intelligence make sure you read about the application areas of ICT especially in artificial intelligence it is an upcoming field that can be tested anywhere in which level so we have the expert system remember the expert system has its parts we have natural language processing we have artificial neural networks we have robotics and others so guys just do a lot of research in ai that is artificial intelligence the examiner must must test uh, must test mark that word it must be tested because we are talking about chat gtp uh, chat bots etc if you have interacted with them realize that we are going ai we are going artificial intelligence look at the games we are playing look at the simulations that are over in youtube uh, twitter that are in uh, tiktok etc so we are talking about ai as an emerging issue so guys remember to subscribe remember to like my videos remember to comment remember to share and also remember to come up again to check on what i have done next guys thank you very much for watching thank you very much